We have at least four new bright regions on the Earth-facing Sun, solar flux reaches and surpasses 100 for the first time in years, and a halo around the Sun hints at what's to come. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. We are in the midst of a paradigm shift in space weather this week, and our sun is getting busy. As we take a look at the front side disk, look at all the bright regions. There's so many I can hardly keep track of them. We have 2783 in the south, 2784 in the north, and we have region 2785 and 86 just beginning to rotate into Earth view off of the sun's east limb. Back on the 22nd, we had multiple solar storms. Neither of them were Earth-directed, but one came from region 2783 and a northern filament eruption that came off near region 2784 in the north. Both of those went east of us, so we didn't really have any issues with those. But then on the 24th, wham, look at that monster that launched off of region 2785 and 86, that whole region in there. That one is also not earth directed, but it's a bit larger. And I tell you, all of these bright regions have now boosted the solar flux up past 100, which means we can actually say radio propagation on Earth's day side is in the good range. Oh my gosh, when was the last time I was actually able to say that? So we are back in the green when it comes to radio propagation, and it looks like some of the regions on the sun's far side are going to keep it really close to that range. So we're going to be good news here. We also have uh, uh, aurora photographers had this coronal hole that gave us some fast solar wind just over the past couple days, and that brought us up to storm levels, and we got some decent aurora, especially at high latitudes and even a skosh down to mid latitudes. So we are definitely keeping busy with all of these regions. It's hardly, it's hard to know where to look anymore. And this is just the front side sun. As we take a look at our far sided sun, this is stereo A and we're looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see regions 2783 and 2784 as they rotate off of the sun's west limb in stereo's view. You see regions 2785 and 86 basically in the middle of stereo's view. Look how massive that cluster is. And they have been firing off solar storms like crazy crazy. Now, that's not all it, though. Take a look past them. We've got two more regions, both in the north and in the south. One of them, maybe both of them, will get new designations here over the next few days as they rotate into view. But that's not all. Take a look past it. In the south, on the sun's west limb, or east limb, you can't even see this eruption yet, but take a look. Whammo! Right there! Blam! Did you see that? That is a massive solar storm launch from a region we can't even see yet. And in coronagraphs, this region, look at it. Ready? Bam! Right there. Look how massive that big solar storm is launching on the sun's far side. So this region we're going to be very excited about because it's launching very strong solar storms. And not only may it be a solar storm producer, but it also be, may be the first M-flare player we've seen in quite some time. Switching to our coronagraph view, now this is the LASCO coronagraph on the SOHO spacecraft that's just sunward of Earth, and that means that this view is from the Earth's perspective. And as we take a look at just on the 24th, there were several solar storms being launched. If we look at the gray image, that is the difference image that accentuates features as opposed to just the regular image that's here in red. You can see that solar storm at the beginning of the, tw of the 24th being launched to the south, that was from region 2785 uh, and region 2786. That storm is going to miss Earth to the east, so we don't have to worry about that. But just a few hours later, wham! Look at that massive storm being launched. It creates a ring all the way around the sun. That is called a full halo. And we haven't seen a full halo eruption since something like 2017, so it's been quite a few years. And what this means is that these big solar storms are now being launched with ferocity. Velocity. And that's something we haven't seen in quite some time. This is why I'm calling it a paradigm shift. But don't worry, this particular solar storm is not Earth directed. It's actually launched to the sun's far side. But once that region rotates into view, we're definitely going to keep an eye on it. And as it rotates into Earth view, which will be in about a week, it could be an M flare player. So, amateur radio operators and emergency responders and GPS users, you may be in store for radio blackouts pretty soon. 
Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 30th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with, so you better check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, although we do have quite a few solar storms being launched from the sun right now, none of them are Earth directed. However, we have been having a coronal hole rotate in through the Earth strike zone over the past couple days and it's still continuing to do so. This is that northern polar coronal hole and at high latitudes it's actually been giving us some decent aurora show. In fact, it's bumped us up to G1 storm levels just a few days ago and we're still beginning to kind of calm down from that. So so our Earth's field is very rattled and could easily pop back up to solar storm levels here very quickly. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting us to have active conditions, but we have up to about a 40% chance of a major storm. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but as you can see, we have up to about a 25% chance of active conditions at mid-latitudes, and this should last easily in through the beginning of the weekend, and things should then easily calm down. However, we do have region 27, 85, and 86 that are rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and if they happen to launch a solar storm, all of this can change in a heartbeat. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week. Believe it or not, not everything is in the green this week. When was the last time I was able to say that, huh? We have multiple regions on the Earth-facing disk, along with some defunct regions, and then we even have more regions that are going to be rotating into view over the next couple days. And all of that put together means that our M-flare risk is finite this week. We're up to about a 10 to a 15% chance of M-class flares, and that does mean that we have a risk risk for radio blackouts. So you GPS users, be very careful on Earth's day side, especially near the dawn dust terminators, you could have some intermittent issues just from potential of radio blackouts. Now, granted, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, that's bad news, but I think you'll take the trade-off. I'm, I'm sure you're hearing the noise on the bands right now, but have you checked this out? Look at the solar flux. This is due to those regions on Earth's day side. Oh my gosh, we are back into the green and triple digits for solar flux. That means radio propagation should be the best that you've heard it in, I don't know, maybe three or four at least three years, I would think. And this should easily continue because we have more regions on the sun's far side that will rotate into view here over the next couple of weeks. However, we do have uh, that M flare risk that's probably gonna go up, especially when that new region that fired that big halo solar storm, when that one rotates into view, it could be a real M flare player. So just hang on to your seat because it looks like the sun is really gonna start taking us for a ride. Now also because we are still climbing at a solar minimum, believe it or not. We still have a higher cosmic ray flux than we'd like to have, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are still in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is going through a paradigm shift. We have so many bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and they're all firing off a bunch of solar storms, and we also have new regions that are going to be rotating into view here over the next week, and they're firing solar storms. So aurora photographers, hey, we've got a fast solar wind that's kind of growing, going through the Earth strike zone right now, and at high latitudes, you're still going to get a chance for aurora over the next couple days before things calm down, and then if we get region 20, 785 and 86 to rotate through the Earth strike zone and launch a solar storm, hey, we could have yet another chance for aurora, so keep your fingers crossed. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we have that non-zero M-flare risk now. We, that means we've got radio blackouts or a possibility, and I'm sure you're hearing all of the sizzle on the bands from all of these bright regions, but hey, I'm sure you'll take it, right? Because solar flux is back up into triple digits. We're sitting at 100% 
solar flux and in the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. So rejoice, 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 because it looks like it's going to continue to stay that way easily over the course of this week and possibly through next week as well. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you. Now, the only people who probably aren't liking things quite so well are GPS users. Now, GPS users, you guys are having to deal with the possibility of radio blackouts. That could give you some issues easily on Earth's day side. So especially near the Dawn Dust Terminator, be very careful. You could have intermittent uh, signal fades. But also, I'm sure with all the solar flux rising, you're not really liking it down near low latitudes. That could actually affect you a little bit as well and kind of make GPS degrade just a, just a skosh. So you're going to have to deal with that. And of course, anytime you're near Aurora, you could also have issues. So be sure to stay away from Aurora as well. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.